Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today for our Global Reviews Energy Provider uh, webinar. Today we're going to be sharing some of the results and insights with you across our Australian, Irish and also UK studies collected this year. My name's Leah Petty, I'm a Principal Client Advisor at Global Reviews. Uh, we've got quite a lot of content to get through today, um, but really excited to share some of these results across the three regions with you. So we'll do a quick methodology recap before jumping into our marketing effectiveness results. Then we'll have a look at our sales effectiveness, which is the on-site experience uh, results, looking at who are the top performers across the three regions. We've had a couple of new entrants across both the UK and Australia enter recently who are directly going after their competitors' bills on their website. So we'll have a look at that and also what you can do to combat that strategy. Then finally, we'll be sharing some of the results and also looking at the barriers that face consumers when they're researching G providers from a mobile device. We executed this study earlier this year uh, in Australia, but also included a UK brand EDF uh, to understand some of the differences between uh, the leaders in that region compared to Australia. So at Global Reviews, we take the perspective of the customer journey. So looking at the four phases of online research, discovery, are they aware of your brand? Can they find you online? Consider, can they find the information that they need in order to evaluate your brand and potentially choose you? Act, can they sign up and complete the process online? And finally, we won't cover it too much today, uh, but also looking at relate. So once you have acquired the customer, how are you utilising your digital assets to actually retain that customer? We'll be looking at two different data sets today. So the first one is our digital marketing effectiveness study. This looks broadly at how consumers research energy providers online. So where do they go? What websites do they visit? How do they search? Who, which brands do they choose after completing this process and what actually influences their decision to choose that brand? We'll then move on to our sales effectiveness studies across both desktop and mobile. This study looks more specifically at the on-site experience. So how does the online experience compare on your website against your competitors and where are the opportunities to improve to ensure we're filtering those customers through? We have four key data inputs that not only provide us the insights to get in and diagnose the potential problems on your site, but also to provide the top level score, which we'll see shortly, uh, that helps us to benchmark against our competitors. The three on the right uh, come from our in-market consumers who are looking for a new energy provider every time we execute the study. One of the key ones I'll point out here is the customer attitude. So this is really key, understanding if a customer has had a frustrating or unsatisfactory experience definitely impacts their likelihood to return to your site or choose you as a brand. And this is something that you may not be getting from your A-B testing that you might be executing internally. We pull these three uh, elements together with our best practice audit, which is criteria across your website. So we have around about 500 different touch points across energy retailer websites that we've built up internally over the years that really help to deliver the best experience online for people who are researching uh, for an energy provider. So what features, functions, content are you perhaps missing that your competitors might be providing to help acquire the customer? So jumping into marketing effectiveness and looking at across the three different regions, who is winning and how does the online research process impact consumers' likelihood to choose you or your competitor's brand? So for the marketing effectiveness study, this is the process that our participants take. So we ask them a few uh, awareness and recall uh, questions. We then ask them who they would prefer now if they had to choose a brand before their research. And that's our initial preference metric. They then complete their research online, which is where we're able to capture where they go and how they search. And after completing this process, we then ask them which brands would they now shortlist for further consideration and which brand would they choose as their final preference. So here we're looking at the final preferences 
across the three regions for the most recent studies. So in Australia, we can see that AGL uh, captured the largest number of final preferences with 22%, and this was executed in May. Uh, that's quite a difference from the previous study in February, where AGL actually had 27% of final preferences, and they've lost that share to Origin and Energy Australia, who've increased uh, over this recent period. Across Ireland, Energia holding 33% of uh, market share of final preferences, followed by Electric Ireland. Again, quite a significant change there, where uh, Airtricity actually held 22% of final preferences in the previous period. In the UK, EON Energy uh, was the market leader. Significant change there as well, where British Gas was the market leader in the previous period. Uh, this was collected in January, um, so some big movement happening in the UK markets as well. So what's happening within each of these regions? So in Australia, before uh, before participants start completing their research, the number one brand that is preferred is Origin, but you can see there that it's quite close between Origin and AGL. Uh, compared to the previous period, uh, Lumo Energy has increased their share significantly, so in the previous period they were only initially preferred by 3%. After completing research, we can see which brands were shortlisted by consumers and then finally who they would prefer. A big call out here is Origin. So they've actually lost share throughout this process from 26% down to 20. Uh, of all the people that initially preferred Origin, most of them did stick with Origin, but they did lose some share to AGL and also Simply Energy. What else is impacting the Australian market? So within Australia, 72% used a comparison site to complete their research online. Of the comparison sites visited, iSelect was the most popular with 45% of those who used a comparison site visiting iSelect, uh, whilst only one in five used Compare the Market. Now, how does this affect final preferences? So of the people who use a comparison site, Dodo was much more likely to be chosen. Of those who use iSelect, uh, Origin was significantly more likely to be chosen, so they ended up with 20% uh, of final preferences, but from this audience uh, utilising iSelect, it was up to 37%. On the flip side of that, AGL was the biggest uh, beneficiary from those people visiting Energy Watch. So this is a really great, great way to understand who is benefiting um, from which channel, but also where is the biggest alignment between our audience uh, and the audiences of those different comparison sites. So helping us to evaluate where the best partnerships might lie for us. Moving on to Ireland. So prior to completing online research, Electric Ireland is absolutely the most prepared, almost having half of all initial preferences. Uh, they're very much the uh, current provider, so 80% who chose this brand initially said it was due to them being an existing customer. As we can see here, the research process uh, is definitely benefiting Energia. So throughout the short li listing process, out of, after researching, Energia has gone from being preferred by 11% of customers to actually being considered by almost 60%. They have a really strong presence in search, and so their online strategy is clearly working to get them into the consideration set. We can also see that their strategy has been extremely effective as well in uh, acquiring more of that market share through their online channel. So Energia have tripled their market share through the process of people researching online. Airtricity lost share, uh, so down from 18% down to 14. Boardgosh board has been successful in actually maintaining their share. So whilst they haven't grown, they have been able to protect themselves from some of the other brands. So what is Energia doing so right? So coming from being a challenger brand, the fourth most uh, preferred, to taking one in three final preferences and beating the incumbent Electric Island. 
So of that 33% that chose Energia as their preferred brand, this is where they started off. So we can see that almost 40% had initially preferred Electric Island, but through the process of researching online and visiting Energia's website or utilising search or comparison sites, uh, they have changed their mind to choose Energia. When we look at what other reasons uh, Energia is chosen as the final preference compared to the overall industry average, we can see that they highly over-index for they have the cheapest prices or they have the best deals. This indicates that through their online strategy or the offers that they have, Energia is able to effectively articulate the benefit of their products. So within Australia, there's a huge amount of offers out at the moment, large amount of 28%, 30% off uh, opening credits. And it's really important that your website is able to articulate why yours is the best choice and why they should move forward uh, with your brand before, con without continuing to research other brands. Something else impacting their success Within Ireland, uh, only 58% use a comparison site, so it's not quite as uh, ubiquitous as in Australia. But of those people who use a comparison site, 50% chose Energia as their finally preferred brand. So a huge amount of traction with that audience. When having a look at how uh, consumers executed their research, these are the brand sites that were actually visited. So when we talk about a brand site, it's uh, the example in Australia would be origin originenergy.com.au or energyaustralia.com.au. So what's interesting here is actually Electric Island was more visited than Energia was. So they've had a bigger opportunity to actually explain their value proposition and capture the market than Energia has. However, the second brand has been more effective at capturing that market. So whether it is because of the specific offer or the on-site experience is better at articulating, uh, articulating the benefits of their brand, uh, Electric Island really needs to evaluate how their website is selling them and what, how, how compelling their offer is in the market compared to these challenger brands to really protect themselves because uh, the Irish market is really changing quite significantly at the moment um, and there is huge risk there um, from the tier two brands. So within Australia, uh, if you are a tier two brand uh, or within New Zealand, if you are a tier two brand, uh, then Energia is a really great um, brand to look at their strategy, look at what they're doing within search and their partnerships uh, because they're being highly successful. If we look to the UK, prior to research we can see that British Gas holds almost a third of the market with EDF being second. The research process is uh, quite successful for many of the other brands. So we can see there that Empower, EON, OVO, First Utility have really managed to get themselves into the mix and uh, be considered by one in, one in three or one in five consumers. In terms of how that impacts uh, preference, EON has managed to come out on top. So increasing their share from 11% to 14, so not a huge gap, but the real difference there is where other brands have managed to acquire share from British Gas. One of the most notable is OVO, who actually doubled their market share from 6% through to 12%. So let's have a look at what's happening and what might be impacting uh, OVO's success. Here we're looking at the top three reasons brands were chosen as the final preference. So we can see a lot of people stating trust or a previous relationship with the brand and also the cheapest price is uh, prevalent as we'd expect. One of the key differences for OVO is that the most popular reason for choosing OVO was that their plans were easy to understand and they had good fees and options. So there's something about the OVO experience that's able to clearly articulate uh, their plans in an easy to understand manner, which is helping them acquire market share. So here we're looking at the plans 
uh, plans landing page on OVO. So a very simple page, there isn't a huge amount of information and at this point you're not putting in your uh, postcode. So the consumer has a very simple decision to make between whether they'd like to pay monthly or pay as they go. If they choose pay monthly, they're then taken to this next step. Again, a really simple decision for the consumer to make. Is four pounds a month worth, sorry, is five pounds a month worth it to me to uh, acquire the greener energy option? Would I rather save that five pounds to have the cheapest option? So again, they're not providing very much information, making it easy for consumers to move to the next step. Once you select your package from here, they're providing you a little bit more information and this is where your quote becomes more specific to your area. So now, only now after step three can we see whether there are exit fees, uh, the term of the offer and clicking to see more is when we receive pricing information. So it's an interesting strategy that within the Australian market, what we are seeing is that our consumers are not this patient. We want more information faster. We want, it, we want it to be easier to find and we want pricing information up front rather than uh, taking a four step process in order to have to find it. However, if you are perhaps a new and emerging brand and you're fighting against the top tier, this might be an interesting strategy to take for the, that specific audience that perhaps isn't as savvy around the energy product who is looking for a very simple and easy to understand option, uh, this is clearly working for OVO. One of the other things that's impacting OVO's uh, success is again uh, the audience who utilises comparison sites. So of those within the UK who utilise a comparison site, OVO was the biggest beneficiary. So 15% chose them, whereas we can see that British Gas and EON were much further down. Within the UK market, comparison sites are equally as popular as they are within Australia. Um, so a really great strategy for OVO. Moving on to our sales effectiveness study. So for sales effectiveness uh, across both desktop, which is the DSC and also the MSE, which is on mobile, we direct our participants uh, to a specific website. And here we're looking at the on-site experience from when they first reach your homepage through to finding products, finding the right product through to completing the application online. First, we're going to look at the results from desktop across the regions and then we'll have a look at how this experience uh, is on mobile. We execute these separately as we interact with each device extremely differently. So here we're looking at the overall score for all brands across the three markets for the most recent studies. So the top three uh, EDF, EON from the UK and Energy Australia is in third place, leading the Australian market. So the leading Irish uh, brand is Board Gosh there in sixth position, followed by AGL and uh, various other brands following on. So it's a great opportunity to have a look at what some of the leaders are doing in other regions to understand where they where we can potentially learn from them. Here we're looking at the different stages across the journey. So in the dotted line, we've got the industry average and in the solid line, we have the score for the top performer. Um, UK and Ireland within this study were actually executed together, which is why we don't have a separate uh, stat for Ireland. So we can see that across uh, both regions, Within the middle of the funnel, there's definitely room for the energy industry to improve. So in terms of articulating how our products best meet uh, our consumers' needs and getting them over the line to actually sign up then and there without continuing to research is a real opportunity for the energy industry. Within Australia, we're performing quite well in terms of application form but we are behind the European markets in terms of introducing options. 
In terms of the actual top performers for each region, uh, we can see here that EDF, who were the uh, overall leader for energy, are leading across three different stages. And within Australia, Energy Australia uh, leading the market in two. But we can see that there's no one brand who's absolutely nailing the process uh, across the whole experience. So opportunity to look at perhaps SSE to understand how they're introducing those options uh, effectively early. Okay, moving on now to some new entrants into the market and how they're utilising on-site external comparison uh, as a key value proposition. So for a while, Scottish Power in the UK has been offering external comparison on their website. So on the left here, we can see their tariffs page, uh, which is their plans page. And there's a clear link on the right hand side there, which takes you to a very simple uh, comparison against two other brands to demonstrate where Scottish Power sits. So quite simple, but not hugely uh, extensive, which may leave some doubt, uh, causing consumers to want to continue to research potentially on other uh, brand sites or comparison sites. We know that other industries have been doing this for quite a while. So on the left, we have motor insurance within the UK. In the middle, we have Sun Super, superannuation, uh, clearly naming their competitors' fees and how they compare on their site, and also NAB on the right-hand side with personal loans stating the uh, rates of their competitors to show how they compare um, on their website. So Sumo is a new entrant into the Australian market. On their homepage, you can see that their second most prominent call to action is for you to compare your bill. This enables you to enter in, the direct de enter in the details directly from your bill for them to identify what your bill would be if you uh, switch to Sumo. So if Sumo's price does come out cheaper than the bill that's right in front of you, it is an extremely compelling uh, proposition for you to now choose Sumo over your current provider. Here we're looking at a new entrant bulb uh, within the UK. On the left, you can see an image of their homepage and clearly prioritised content is external comparison on their homepage. So Bob go that one step further than Sumo do and actually call out uh, their key competitors on their homepage. So if you're Scottish Power and you're uh, tr potentially in the mix for uh, this consumer, it's going to be quite difficult for you to um, acquire them with Bob demonstrating just how much cheaper they are um, than it, if they were to move forward with Scottish Power. So there's many different ways. We know that energy is an extremely price-driven industry, but there are other ways that we can articulate the value uh, to our customers. We need to ensure that we're playing in both areas, but also reassuring the customer that if they are going to pay a slightly higher amount in order to move forward with your brand, um, then there are reasons for doing so. Within the UK, uh, they rely much more heavily than we do in Australia with testimonials and ratings, uh, something that within the Australian market really is executed in a much more subtle manner. So here we're looking at EON on their homepage, they have uh, ratings and also voice of customer as well as Scottish Power. Down the bottom, Click Energy doing it in a slightly more subtle way with their CanStar awards and also product review ratings to help them reassure customers that perhaps have historically used some of the more well-known brands uh, that they are to reassure them that it's safe moving forward with Click Energy. Reward schemes as well are another great way to reassure customers that perhaps price isn't the only uh, factor to consider. So AGL, we know, uh, promoting their flybys initiative, EON and also Energia in the, in, within Europe, promoting their reward schemes. And also higher levels of service. So many brands are 
provide great other options and supports um, that are worthwhile considering in addition to just the discount that you're receiving, but we often don't promote it at the point of decision making. So often this content might be uh, presented in a banner on the homepage, which may often be missed due to bladder bladder banner blindness, uh, or alternatively, we've hidden it away in a service um, page, um, which might often be missed, and therefore not contributing to helping consumers choose us. So on the left, we've got uh, NPower's uh, promotion of their app. AGL also have their community and uh, energy app that they're promoting as well. So these can all play a key, key part, but we need to ensure that consumers are aware of them when they are making that decision as to whether to move forward and sign up with you online or continue researching. The UK are also uh, better than the Australian market at helping to facilitate decisions at that point of decision. So here on the left, we can see Scottish Power uh, with a few just very succinct messages as to why you should move forward with them, as well as EDF uh, in the similar spot, clearly articulating reasons to uh, move forward and actually sign up with their brand. So in summary, uh, consider external comparison on your website. It's not something that's going to be right for all brands, nor should it be. But how are we going to combat this if there are competitors within our market who are going to be comparing uh, and demonstrating that they are cheaper than us on their website? Um, make sure that you're articulating your value at, at the right point within the funnel uh, across many different value propositions, whether it be your rewards, whether it be your customer service or whether it be your discounts. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, we're going to look at uh, the on-site experience for those researching energy on a mobile device. This data was captured within March and April this year within Australia. Uh, we did include a UK brand EDF to see how uh, one of their top performers would stack up against our brands. Uh, but just to clarify, we did put Australian participants through uh, that brand's experience. So in terms of how energy compares to the other industries that we have recently benchmarked on mobile, we can see that domestic flights such as Qantas, uh, Virgin, etc., and also financial institutions and sports betting are uh, offering a really great experience on mobile. Within energy retailers, Energy Australia leads the market as they do for desktop and we can see that EDF came in in second place there uh, just under, sorry, just above AGL. Looking at how energy compares to the top rated uh, or top performing Australian industries, we can see again that there's room to improve across uh, introducing options and evaluating options. So our consumers are falling over in, on a mobile device right from the beginning. We are making it difficult for them to find energy plans uh, and find the pl energy plan that's right for them. We do, however, perform quite well in terms of initial engagement on our homepage and also with application forms. So we'll look at those two strong performing areas now and then we'll jump into areas for improvement. So here we're looking at the scores for homepage impressions. This is where we ask our consumers to rate from 1 to 10, 1 being strongly disagree, 10 being strongly agree, and rate them against different criteria that the homepage uh, needs to meet. We can see that energy within Australia performs really well uh, on this metric with en origin energy and momentum leading the pack. EDF, uh, the UK brand, however, had the lowest rated homepage, and we'll look at that shortly. So here are the different. Here is the different criteria that we ask our consumers to rate uh, the homepage against, and this helps us to identify uh, what might be going wrong or where we are doing really well. For example, origin and momentum, where there is room to improve. 
So for Origin and Momentum, they scored extremely well uh, across all metrics, but their lower scores were across uh, how they are giving the impression that the company could be trusted. So this for them would be an area to look at, how can we, um, how, what content do we need or how can we reformat the homepage to ensure visitors feel comfortable moving forward um, and exploring our brand further rather than just um, moving forward to another brand. For EDF, this helps us understand where their gaps are. So by comparing to the top performers and also understanding where they are against the industry average, we can see that these uh, three key areas, such as the visual design, trust, and also displaying all the information they expect to see, is a key area where they would need to improve. So why is Origin, uh, Origin's homepage scoring so well? Their proposition for new customers is clearly prioritised. They also have very clear and prominent call to actions, which enables visitors to click through quickly and easily to where they want to go. Origin achieved a top score uh, across all brands for offering a clear starting point. So they're really facilitating uh, that journey quickly and easily from the get-go. Since we captured this data, they've also augmented uh, their homepage by including this uh, piece of content around why Origin, which will really help uh, improve that trust score. Finally, they also feature their phone number uh, along with operating hours, which also helps contribute to brand trust, reassuring the visitor uh, that you're there if they have any problems. So as I mentioned, EDF had the lowest rated homepage uh, from Australian consumers, which is an interesting one because they do provide a lot of content around why you should choose EDF, what they offer, um, and what being a customer might be like. So here we're looking at four screenshots at different um, areas of their homepage. So they're offering quite a long uh, scrolling experience. But some interesting voice of customer. So the one on the left was not alone. Uh, this is one example where perhaps the branding is slightly off. Uh, this may be a regional thing to do with Australian consumers, uh, but something that if they were to launch here, uh, they would really need to consider. On the right hand side, we can see that our visitors are perceiving the messages not as uh, promoting their value proposition, but as marketing information that's not relevant to them. So whilst it's really important to include value proposition and why us content, the execution is key. Because here it's not having the uh, impact that EDF would hope for. The other area where uh, Energy performed extremely well was with application forms. So Energy Australia has the highest score for mobile application across all industries. So what can we learn from Energy Australia? They have great help options within the application form. So we've gotten the customer all the way through to uh, choose us as a brand. We don't now want to lose them because they're having a small uh, difficulty. We need to make sure we're there to support them through uh, different channels, whether it be FAQs or calling uh, through to the call centre. Energy Australia also support with positive reinforcement, letting you know that you are moving forward and completing the form correctly. They also provide uh, great communication and assistance. So with the progress bar, also format indicators and letting you know why they need this personal information. So to remove uh, that risk that people might feel that they don't want to complete uh, these details due to marketing activity. They also enable visitors to email the quote, so if they have gotten all the way through and then they get called away, we haven't lost them. And really important, once they have completed the sign-up process, articulating what will happen next. So from the get-go, uh, getting that onboarding process right um, to reassure the customer about what will happen next. So we saw that within the energy industry, there are barriers or issues that consumers are experiencing from finding the right plan right through to um, being able to find a plan that, that meets their needs. So we're going to look at a few examples now of what some of those barriers might be. So one of the first things that consumers will want to do is find the relevant plans or offers uh, that meet their needs. 
28% of AGL customers when trying to complete this task said that they found it difficult to know where to start looking. So from the homepage, in order to find plans, AGL customers are already finding it difficult. One in three of them are already finding it difficult. So from the homepage, they do have uh, some great links on uh, featured similar to how Origin does. However, these links do not cater to people looking for plan information. While you, whilst you can find this information through the Sign Up Now link, it's not clear to many customers that this is where this information would lead. So it's important that these primary links feature the most popular pathways for acquisition, whilst also uh, you can utilise them for catering to existing customers. So 36% of AGL visitors click through the hamburger menu to the energy plans link. This link leads to this page here where you're provided with more options. So the obvious option might be uh, electricity and gas plans, but they've also got options there for new customers. So the consumer is now faced with a, an issue, do I click through based on what I'm looking for or do I click through based on who I am or what I'm looking to become? And the new customers link, uh, which we saw some people click through to, actually links through to content based around what it might be like to be a new customer and the information that you would need to sign up. So it doesn't actually lead them to where they wanted to go uh, in this instance. So really important to make sure that the path is clear and we are prioritising the most popular options. The next thing that consumers will want to do when researching energy online is to perhaps find the charges for the energy plan. When, for visitors on PowerShop's website, only 20% were successful in finding the daily charge for their electricity, electricity plan. 65% of PowerShop visitors experienced a problem uh, when trying to complete this task on a mobile device. We can see there that 35% again found it difficult to know where to start looking and also found that it took a long time to find the information. To clarify uh, the comment on the right hand side that they ran out of time, uh, there is five minutes. Um, they are allocated five minutes for this specific task which should be plenty of time uh, to complete this. It's much significantly lower on other brands. So here we're looking at the PowerShop homepage. 80% click through to how much does it cost from the homepage through the hamburger menu here we can see the different options. So 80% clicking through uh, to the correct link. On the right we can see though that people have quite a long process, uh, quite a long click path before finding success. 20% click through to toolkit, questions or switch from the home page and then need to navigate back and forth because they've taken the wrong uh, step from, from the beginning. So this could be for a couple of reasons. Um, the first one is that are people clicking through by accident uh, because they need to be extremely precise in clicking through to that link how much does it cost or also is it because the terminology is unclear and we're not sure exactly where to go. So there's opportunity for PowerShop to review their menu options not only within their navigation but also in their on-page options. So it's we see uh, quite a few examples on mobile where visitors click through to the wrong area due to the size of the options provided to them. So in both examples here, PowerShop can review how these options are offered to ensure that visitors don't need to be so precise when clicking through. In addition, if I'm a new potential new customer coming to PowerShop, uh, it may be really unclear to me what toolkit is, um, and so we need to make sure that we're being as explicit as possible. Your navigation is not where you should be executing your brand campaign. It's, in short, it's important that visitors are able to very easily and quickly identify where they need to go. Another opportunity for PowerShop is to improve the experience with auto scroll. So there are a lot of uh, voice of customer talking about the scrolling experience. We know that we scroll a lot more on mobile devices, but we can make it easier for customers to know where they need to go on the site. 
So on the left hand side we can see that the options that I now need to put in in order to get a quote and get the specific details for my PowerShop offer are slightly hidden below the fold. So there's an opportunity there for PowerShop when I do reach this page to slightly scroll down or minimise um, that message at the top. Similarly, on the right-hand side, it's not clear at this point uh, whether you where you go to next. So by shifting the page slightly so that visitors can um, clearly identify what their next step is, we're removing the frustration for them uh, where they feel uncertain about the next step and may become frustrated and leave the site. The next thing a customer is want to, going to want to do is identify which offer actually matches their needs most effectively. So for EDF customers, we ask them to find the energy tariff or offer, uh, which has the longest fixed period as well as having no exit fees. Again, quite a few issues with navigation found here. When you land on the tariff landing page uh, on EDF, they list their different offers. Um, this information may not be clear, it doesn't clearly articulate the differences between each package. Also, we have quite a large uh, product name which is excellent from a branding perspective, but how does this uh, aid or impede the customer experience? So if we shrink that slightly, are we able to view more packages within the one screen with, without scrolling up and down, or are we able to perhaps include more information uh, about the product on this page? The comparison page also offers limited information, so if you are looking to compare more detailed information, as you can on other websites, you need to click through separately to the different packages via more details. Another concern with this website is that it does have conflicting information as to which actually has the uh, longest term uh, for the price locked in. So um, important that it is extremely clear so that there's no ambiguity and no confusion for customers to ensure that they find it easy to select a product that meets their needs and they can move forward. Across the middle of the funnel, uh, Energy Australia had some of the highest satisfaction scores and some of the lowest uh, problem number of problems experienced. So what are they doing well? Energy Australia provide clear pathways to plan information for, re for residential customers. So whether you're using the hamburger navigation or the on-page options, it is very clear where your next step is and what the correct option is. The compare table is offered immediately on the, on the plans page, so they're shortening the journey. And they're also providing a lot of information within the one page. So removing that requirement to go through and click into individual packages in order to understand the differences. So in summary, uh, for energy on mobile, it's really important to provide clear, obvious and accessible options on the home page, ensuring the option pathway is clear. So whether that is the format and size of your options that make it easy for us to click through, whether it's the visibility of these options or the terminology that we're using, uh, we need to ensure that consumers are able to quickly and easily find these options and that there's no confusion about where that might take them to. We need to ensure the home page is communicating the right message about your brand, um, how the images are impacting people and how our value proposition messages are being interpreted. It's important to ensure your application form is not getting left behind not only against market leaders uh, within energy but also against other industries such as financial. We need to ensure that all our hard work um, with a great offer and a great website experience is not being lost with a poor application form uh, that drives our visitors to uh, leave the site and consider someone else. We need to ensure the pathway is clear and simple so visitors can quickly and easily find uh, plan information. 
And again, we need to ensure that it's very easy for visitors to compare against different products to understand which product best meets their needs in a clear manner. So that's all I have for you today. Um, for those of you uh, who haven't worked with us before, today, although we did have quite a lot of content, uh, we really just touched the surface. Um, with our subscribing clients, we work with them on a more regular basis, um, usually with uh, a minimum of two studies across a year. Um, you can see there that our next studies are coming up in August, September this year. We also do quite a lot of um, bespoke projects with our clients. So if you are looking at uh, developing or redeveloping your apps or your online services for uh, customers, then please do get in touch. Uh, our details are on the screen, so please don't hesitate to get in touch if you do have any questions uh, or you would like to uh, be involved in our next study. But thank you so much for uh, attending today and look forward to speaking to you soon.